Welcome to ITTV and welcome to Form 4 Science. The title of your first lesson in Form 4 Science, Scientific Investigation. Scientific Investigation. Basically here what we want to have a look at is how we do an experiment. Why we do experiments. What is the purpose of doing an experiment? What we hope to get by doing an experiment. Science is the study of the natural phenomena around us. And sometimes our curiosity wants us to know why something happens. Why do clouds form in the sky? Why can birds sometimes float in the sky without flapping their wings? How is it that fish can swim so quickly through the water? All of these are scientific phenomena. And in order to work out or understand why they occur, we need to do an experiment or a scientific investigation that will allow us to find the answer to our questions. To be able to find answers to questions about the world around us, we need to carry out scientific investigation. A scientific investigation has orderly sequence of steps. And it's this orderly sequence of steps that we really want to have a look at during the course of this lesson. So let's begin by having a look at this orderly sequence. First, we observe a phenomena. Observing a phenomena. Second, identifying the problem. So there must be a problem related to the phenomena. Why does it happen? What causes it to happen? When does it happen? Next, forming a hypothesis. We make an educated guess as to why, what, how. So we come up with some sort of a relationship. When X increases, Z increases. Something like that. We make an educated guess. Next, planning the investigation. Here we're going to look at the factors affecting our phenomena. What causes it to occur? Whether it makes it occur faster, slower, make it go higher, make it go lower. These tend to be called variables. And we'll have a look at these variables as the lesson progresses. Next, carrying out the investigation. Here we want a simple diagram to show all our apparatus, all our materials, how it's set up. Then we need a step-by-step -step procedure about how the experiment will flow. Also, we want to list out what changes we make and what data we are going to record. Next, observing and collecting the data. We watch the experiment, we do the experiment, we write down all the things we see, all the values that we are looking at. Next, analyzing and interpreting the data. We tabulate the data, put it in a table, put it in a graph, and then try and work out how the different factors are affecting each other. Next, making a conclusion. Was our hypothesis correct? Were we correct? When X increases, does Z actually increase? If our hypothesis is correct, then maybe we move on and do another experiment to further prove our hypothesis. If the hypothesis was wrong, we got to go back to the drawing board. We got to think about the whole problem again and then do another experiment. Finally, writing a report. When we're finished, we write up a report so that everyone can see what we did and then hopefully benefit from it, learn from it, expand on it and maybe do a better experiment than we could have to give us an even better result hypothesis or conclusion than what we could have done. Now that we've gone through the steps, let's do a mock. That means let's try and do this step by step using a simple experiment. Problem, question, practice. Phenomena, some paper planes fly further than others. Problem question, 
how does the mass of a paper plane affect the distance the airplane flies? A student wanted to test how the mass of a paper airplane affected the distance it would fly. Paper clips were added before each flight. The MV, this is the manipulated variable, would be the mass of paper airplane. The responding variable, distance the airplane flies. Constants or constant variables, airplane design mass of clips so basically what we have is a paper aeroplane when you have your paper airplane or aeroplane you want to see how far it's going to fly and what affects it so you're going to test the effect of mass and to change the mass we're going to use simple paper clips what we're going to do is add the paper clips to the airplane and then see whether or not it flies further or does not fly as far. Before we can do that, we need to make an educated guess. You must try. Think about it. Do you think that a plane with a larger mass will fly further? Or do you think a plane with a larger mass will fly a shorter distance? Step 1. Example Hypothesis if the mass of a paper plane increases, then I predict the distance the plane will travel will decrease, increase. You need to make the decision yourself. I can't do it for you. So you need to basically decide if the mass increases, the plane will fly a shorter distance. If the mass increases, the plane will fly a longer distance. It's either one of these two you need to decide what your hypothesis is going to be. Now, once you've decided on your hypothesis, then we need to move on and start to create these variables that we were talking about. Part two, variables in a scientific investigation. Variables, physical quantities that can be measured and can affect the flight. So here we want to look at what will affect the flight. In our case, we're going to look at mass. Physical, other, other types of physical quantities could be things like the temperature or it could be things like mm, the length of the airplane or it could be something else like possibly the type of paper you were using, whether the paper was rough or whether the paper was smooth. But in our case, we're just looking at mass. Manipulated variable. Manipulated variables. The variable that is purposefully changed can have only one in an investigation. So examples of your manipulated variable would be something that you could change. Example, the mass, the type of paper, whether it was rough or smooth, the length of the airplane, whether it was long or short. All of these could be your manipulated variable, something that you can change from the first experiment to the second, to the third, to the fourth. That is your manipulated variable. In our case, our manipulated variable is the mass of the airplane. So let's go up to the board and make a note of this. So in our case, the manipulated variable we are looking at The manipulated variable, remember this is what we are changing. So let's put that in a little bracket here. This is what we are changing. And in this case, it is the mass of the airplane. This is our manipulated variable. Let's go on and have a look at the next variable. Responding variable. Responding variable, the variable that changes when the manipulated variable is changed, usually measured in an investigation. So it's something that we're going to observe or measure. How fast the water evaporated, how quickly the color changed, what the color change was, a temperature rise, the distance traveled. All of these are things that we are going to observe and measure. And these are what we call responding variables. 
Now in the case of our experiment, the responding variable will be the distance the airplane flies or the distance traveled by the airplane. So let's put that in. This is the responding variable. In general, this is what we measure or observe. Here, in this case, our responding variable is the distance travelled by the plane. Distance travel. So, we've got our manipulated, we've got our responding. Now we, let's have a look at the last of our variables, which is called the constant variable. Constant. Fix controlled variables. Quantities that will affect the result if the quantities are not kept the same. So here we are looking at things that must always be the same. You need to have the same conditions. Meaning you can't fly the aeroplane with a low mass outside and then do the next experiment indoors. You've got to do it in the same place. You sometimes need to maintain the temperature. Sometimes you need to maintain the mass of the airplane. The type of paper you use for the airplane. The design of the airplane. These are things that you don't want to change because if they change, they can affect how far the plane is going to travel. So we don't want to investigate their effect. We want to only investigate the effect of mass. So these are kept the same, fixed, constant. So in our case, let's just pick a simple thing as our constant variable. So our constant variable Okay, so this is what is fixed. And let's select the design of the airplane. We're using the same design each time. So, design of airplane. Okay, so we've got our three variables, the manipulated, the responding, and the constant variable. Now we need to move on and think about what we're going to use to do this experiment. Step 3. Apparatus. Must include all the apparatus needed to conduct the experiment. Now if you're going to take a, a, a paper airplane and then you're going to let it fly and you want to measure the distance it flies, then you want to repeat the experiment using paper clips to add mass to the airplane. Think about all the things that you need. So, let's list out our apparatus and materials. Okay, so here we're looking at apparatus and materials. Now, our apparatus and materials in this case is going to be, well, obviously we need paper to make the plane. We need paper clips which are going to add our mass. We need to be able to measure the distance the plane flies. So we need a tape measure. And that's pretty much it. Now, we also need you, obviously, because you're going to throw the plane, but you don't need to add that into the list. So we need paper, paper clips, and a tape measure. Step four, procedure. Include information to perform the experiment so as to measure the manipulated variable and the responding variable. Format. Number one, list the step-by-step -step process. Two, must not be numbered. Three, use simple sentences. Four, include diagrams to illustrate the steps in the procedure. So, we need to come up with a procedure for our airplane experiment. So, let's go up to the board and try to create a simple procedure for ourselves. So, here we're looking at the procedure. First, obviously, we need to make the paper airplane. So, make paper airplane and then what we need to do is release the paper airplane and measure the distance 
Very good. So we let's say fly the plane and measure distance. So we've got our first two steps. Now we want to do the thing again, the whole process, but by adding weights to it. So next we just repeat step two by adding one, two, three, four, and five. Paper clips. So, simple procedure. List down the steps one by one and then finally make sure you clearly identify the responding variable and the manipulated variable. The responding variable, we've got it here, measure distance. The manipulated variable over here, adding one, two, three, four, five paper clips, which means we're increasing the mass. So those are clearly identified in your procedure the responding and the manipulated variable and also the steps are clear for anyone to read and be able to do the experiment that you are describing. 5. Test hypothesis. Conduct the experiment. Collect the data from the tables, graphs and observations. Qualitative data requires judgment or opinion. Observations such as color change, odor, etc. Quantitative data, measured or numbered data, time, measurement of distance, mass, temperature. You must include all data from the experiment. Always repeat trials to improve results. Must do three trials at each interval being measured and then average. So try to not do it once, but do it two, three times. If you're doing the experiment with one paper clip, Throw it once, measure its distance, repeat it once or twice, and then get an average value. Don't just do it once. What if there was a gust of wind? What if something went slightly wrong? You're not going to get accurate results. Remember to always repeat each step of the experiment at least three times to get a more accurate result. Step five, tabulation of data. Table format. Titles, labels, units, manipulated and responding variable. Normally when we tabulate our data, what we do is we put the manipulated variable and the responding variables in a nice simple table. Example, we've done our experiment, let's do our data. So let's do a table, a simple table like this. So over here, the first column will be your manipulated variable. In this case, it would be the mass. And if you have units, put in the units. If you know the mass of the paper clips, if you don't, just say paper clips, one paper clip, two paper clip. Over here, your responding variable, which is your distance. And then put in the units. If you measured it in centimeters or meters, put your units in here. Then go through it. You got M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, however many experiments you did. Over here would be your distances. D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, whatever they were. Once you've done this, you can then use this data for other things. You can plot a graph to have a look at what the graph looks like. You can analyze the data to try and work out what is the relationship between mass and distance. Does it travel further? Does it travel less when the mass increases? Step seven, conclusion. Interpret the data. Was the hypothesis accepted or is not accepted? What did you say? If you said that when the mass increases, the distance decreases and the distance decreased, you were right. But if you said when the mass increases, the distance decreases, but actually what you noticed was when the mass increases, the distance increased, then your hypothesis would be incorrect. 
which means you would have to go back and redo the experiment with the new hypothesis and try and work out why you were wrong, where you went wrong. So understand your final part. You may have to make a conclusion and the key here is were you correct? Was the guess you made before the experiment a correct guess or an incorrect guess? If it was correct, you can move on, write up your report. If it was incorrect, well then you need to go back and redo the experiment, redo the variables and work out what it was that was wrong. Finally, repeat, replicate. Repeat the experiment over and over again to support your findings. You know, when we do experiments, it's not going to be one experiment that gives us the answer. It's going to be a lot of experiments. Now, just a simple thing, a common experiment may take one, two, three times to do before you get an answer. Sometimes it may take several hundred times before you get the answer. But as a scientist, we don't get demoralized when our experiments are wrong or if our hypotheses are wrong. The whole idea is to find out what is the correct answer. And usually the path to the correct answer is littered with incorrect ideas or hypotheses. Don't worry about the times you are wrong. Just worry about keep doing it until you get it right. That's the key thing to being a scientist. Never get demoralized. Just keep doing and doing until you get the right answer. That's all the time we have for this lesson on scientific investigation. Thank you for watching ITTV.